Hey everybody, it's Steve and Chelsea Scott with Come Follow Me. Hi you guys. Welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is scripture scuba. Don't you like the sound of that? We are doing Genesis 40 through 50 and we are March the 14th through the 20th. Welcome everybody. Of course, I have to say welcome. We love you because we do. We're so grateful for you guys. Um, we had some fun comments from last week when we did the colors. The true. true colors shining through. I was waiting for him to sing. <laughs> and I just want to, we wanted to give a shout out to Lynn Goatman. I hope we said your last name right. What I loved about what he said is she's like listening and then she's like, and, I, and then I'm thinking, how, how does this relate to me? What are my true colors? And that's exactly what we want hap happening in this community, in this group, is that you applying what you're learning and really digging deeper. And then Christine Foster Thank you so much for the kind words, and our favorite part of what you said was... Keep on keeping on. And we will end, you too. Love you. So here's Thank your fist you. bump. Boom. And your high five. whoop -bam. To both of you, one, two. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Give this video a like and a share. That just helps things move in this YouTube algorithm. Guys, if you need a scripture or a screenshot of today's lesson, you can go to thestevescott.com. You can find it on the, the Come Follow Me download section, and there will be a free handout and a free screenshot of today's lesson. It makes it a lot easier for us that way, so thank you for being open to letting us do things a little bit different. Guys, grab your scriptures, your journals, and your scripture markers. It's time for us to connect up. Yep. All right, today's lesson, we're talking about Joseph in Egypt and his reuniting with his brothers. Now, you'll be like, Steve, what the heck does scripture scuba have to do with this? <laughs> Here's what I mean. Okay, today's lesson is really important because in the Old Testament, we go through a lot of scriptures. I mean, look at the scripture block here. It's 42 through 50. It's a lot of reading. And there's it's such lots of good stories. There's lots of stories that are going to happen. We're going to talk about Joseph in Egypt, Joseph and his brothers reuniting. We're going to talk about um, like the Pharaoh. We're going to talk about the Ten Plagues. We're going to talk Ten Commandments and the Exodus and the Red Sea and all Later. these all these things coming up. Not today. But what I want to do is I want to prepare you for those moments. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we have to be prepared in advance. So when we get there, it's not like this. We want to have the experience with the Old Testament that we, we need to have. So in order to do that, and some of you who've been here long enough know that this is something I keep repeating over and over again, because it's something I follow every week. Chelsea and I follow this every single week when we study our scriptures. I'm going to give you the comparison. Now, Chelsea and I are taking to our, fa our family to Hawaii for the whole month of April this month. So if you coming up in a couple weeks. So if some of you We're so excited. are in Hawaii and you're on the North Shore and we bump into you, we should say hi. Yes. We should have a little Reach out to us. We say should hi. have a luau in the backyard where we're staying. A come follow me luau. Does anyone want to do that? <laughs> that would Just be message fun. us, message us, okay? Find me on my website and we'll talk. All right. So I want to talk about swimming, snorkeling and scuba diving. Swimming Snorkeling and scuba diving. Two different, three different ways of being in the water, but you experience it differently. In swimming, you cover a lot of ground, like, well, some of you, some of us cover a lot, <laughs> right? But you don't get the full benefit of putting your head under the water and snorkel and seeing all the beautiful colors and the fish and the coral and the beautiful things that happen once you snorkel. You know, I had a friend one time, we were fishing in a mountain lake and I was fishing. Well, I was fishing and for some reason he was snorkeling. And he's just like, he, he likes that kind of stuff in a freezing cold glacier lake. And, and he could have been Chelsea's brother or something. And what happened was I cast my, my line out and it broke. And it had a bobber on it. And all of a sudden the bobber disappears and went down under the water. And he said, oh, get it. And he snorkeled over there and he dove down. And he said this little bobber was following a fish all over the place. And he grabbed the bobber, brought it back. We unhooked the fish, threw it back. But that was the power of snorkeling to be able to see underneath. If you were just swimming, you'd never see that. The uh, third one is scuba diving, which is so fun. I love it. I have never been, but... I'm telling you, it is fun. Because you, I always was like snorkeling going, I want to be down there. Like, way down there. It's way more fun. You see more, but it requires like a little bit more work to do and a little bit more training. So we're going to get you there. So here's what it looks like. Swimming in the scriptures is reading the story, covering, highlighting, scripture marking, journal, important. 
and cover a lot of ground. That's why swimming looks like this. Snorkeling is principles and doctrines and highlighting, writing in the journal and finding all those principles that stand out. Like in this section of scripture, we have so many principles, right? Mm -hmm. We have so many. Today, we Chelsea and I are only going to focus on three, but... There's you, lots in there. You could find 50 or 100. You could find so many principles. Mm -hmm. And you're going to write them in your journal and you're going to just write them down and go, ooh, 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 look at this principle. Like there's one principle that it's just an underlined phrase that I underlined said, when the money failed. In the story of Joseph in Egypt, when the money failed everywhere else, everyone needed food and they started bringing animals and gold and silver and things to the Pharaoh, to Joseph in exchange for money. There is a principle there that is really important about when the money fails, what's the most important thing? Your spirituality, your physical life, what's most important? Your family, so many good things. Mm -hmm. You're going to find those as you study this week. And then what's going to happen is we move that to the application, which is me here and now. How many of you guys have been in a Sunday school lesson? It usually happens with teenagers and young people. And they'll say, please take the, help us take this lesson and apply it into our daily lives. Raise your hand if you've ever heard that before. Okay. Well, I'm going to help you answer your prayer so you never have to repeat that ever again to teach you how to apply this lesson into your daily life. Okay. And that's the me here application. You can right. learn that today, right? Let's get it. All right, Chelsea, take it away. All right. <laughs> I really like to study out specific things. That, and again, he's saying, like, you can pull out these principles and you're like, I need to hear this. I need to, like, learn more about this. This is just something that I need right now. Okay? And then how it applied to me. So forgiveness was one of the first ones I loved. And I just thought, like, it was so important to really focus on this principle. Okay? So we're going to go to the story, then we're going to go to snorkeling, and then we're going to go to the scuba, which is, to me, deeper, okay? So Genesis 42, 21. So imagine Joseph, here he is, sold into Egypt, and his brothers show up. Remember, they sold him, they were actually plotting to kill him, and then after years, 20 years, they show up in Egypt. Now, how many of you would be having moments of like, Ugh. now we get to expect we get to experience Joseph's moment with his brothers coming back to Egypt. Let's let's read it so then we can snorkel a little bit. Yes. So where are we? 42.21. Genesis 42.21. So, and they said one to another, we are very guilty concerning your brother. So this is when they stepped into Joseph and they're like, didn't you have another brother? Like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And they, this is what the brothers are telling Joseph. We are very guilty concerning our brother in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us and we would not hear it. Therefore, is this distress upon us? And Reuben answered them saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child and you would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. The brothers feel this and Joseph is hearing going, What? Like they, remorse. they had remorse about this? What? This is this is that moment that they have, okay, when we start talking about. So we're just discovering. We're swimming. Okay, so 43, 23 through 24. So go there. Okay, and I'll read this. And he said, Peace be unto you, fear not. Our God and the God of our, your father hath given you treasure in your sacks. I have your money. And he brought Simeon out unto him. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water. And they washed their feet. And he gave them their asses provend provender. Which is food. Okay. So their donkeys, food. So he's working with his siblings that do not know that it's him, and he's helping them. Not only that, but he's having his feet washed. Joseph is like, wash their feet, feed their animals, bring them in. Now remember, Joseph is, he's got some responsibility in Egypt. And he has the power to send them to jail and put them in jail like he was. He has the power to do that. He has a power to dig a pit for them mm -hmm. and throw them into jail. And there was 22 years, it says about 22 years in between them selling him into Egypt that he had, that he could have just festered this anger for 20 plus years. He could have done that. Now, how many of you in the moment of like, when we start talking about forgiveness, have people that you would like to throw them into a pit and you have stinky pits that you want to throw people into? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was a bad joke. <laughs> okay. 
But you guys would miss it if you didn't tell them, wouldn't, wouldn't you? Yes, you would. Okay, so then we're going to go to 45, 14 through 15, okay? All right. Okay. Go ahead. When Joseph saw his brother, and he finally saw Benjamin, so you're, you're going to read the story. Now, some of you guys be like, they're skipping all the story. Time out, y'all. Time out. Y'all should have read all of the scripture block before you come to us. Like, you should. This would be the part. If you haven't, pause. Go listen to your scriptures and read them. You dive in and you swim. That would be very strange. I'd have to be like a scripture lifeguard to jump in and be like, okay, th that's my job. It's like, they're drowning in the surf. Let me help them. But my job is not to be like, to swim for you. Like, do you know what I mean? We can't have like 10,000 people being drug along by Steve and Chelsea with ropes and being like, come on guys, it's really this. Yeah, you like paddle, just paddle. Okay. Kick your feet. You can do this. Yes. So read the scriptures on your own. I'm just showing you the principles that we found about forgiveness, okay? So, and he fell upon his brother's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talked with him. This is a level that you start feeling what Joseph felt when he saw his brothers and just the emotion and the forgiveness that he gave. Now, this is kind of like Joseph becomes a type of Christ. He becomes that example similar to Jesus Christ. And we go, wow, he was sold into Egypt. Jesus was sent into Egypt when he was two. Joseph um, has all these experiences where his brethren despise him and persecute him. Jo Jesus has the same. And then he forgives. Often he forgives. And he weeps with those whom have harmed him. Have harmed him. Done. Yeah. Right? So these are really great examples. Okay. And then 50, 17 through 18. There, okay. So shall you say unto Joseph, so this is after um, Jacob or Israel dies, and the brothers come back to Joseph, and they kind of make up this story. This is interesting. <laughs> that their father commanded them to tell him before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, and I pray thee now, the trespasses of thy brethren, bless you, and their sin, for they did unto the evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespasses of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before him his face. And he said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Okay. So this was the thing about this, was that even though his brothers were still not in a place where he was, like spiritually developed even after like those many years and they're going back and they're still kind of playing these weird games with him and he again he's telling them like no like I, in 21 it says fear you not I will nourish you and your little ones and he comforted them and he spake kindly into them he just spoke peace to them again and one of the things that I really loved is for am I in the place of God like I am in a place where I'm close to God and God is with me and I know that I am supposed to forgive and I'm going to do that. And even though they had their own fears, he was committed to doing what was right. Why forgiveness? Why have such an extreme example of forgiveness? Now we know that lots of you are dealing with, with things with your family. Like you have, there's hurt feelings and there's challenges. Now, as you read this, you might you might begin to start snorkeling and being like, wow, look at this forgiveness. And then that snorkeling might take you further into the application and scuba part, yeah. right? Do you notice how it naturally takes us to that spot? Mm -hmm. So what are you thinking? Where are you at? Let's, let's snorkel a little bit more. Okay. So here is a, a talk by Larry J. Echo Hawk, right? And it's from... 20, April 2018, even as Christ forgives you, so also do ye. And I don't know if you remember this story, but his brother and his sister-in-law were killed in a car accident by a drunk driver. Um, and it's a really powerful story because their whole, their whole family was in agony over this experience. And his heart was very, like, bitter. Like, he was pretty angry. And I think we could, you know, if that happened in our family, we could think about, or maybe it has just the, the pain that you're going through at this time. And so what happened is his mother um, and his sister in the in the room where they had the offender and they were 
sentencing him, his mother and his sister got up and went over because his to the people that his parents and this boy who had done this and just spoke with them and spoke peace to them and just helped them. And that helped him, um, Elder Echo Heart, Echo Hawk, to feel peace. And it actually opened up his heart. He said, over time, I learned how to have a forgiving heart. That was like what started opening it, seeing that other people were doing it. And there's so much power when we, when we have these examples. Okay. So this is the next thing. However, we also know that as sons and daughters of God, we follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. We are to be forgiven even when it seems others may not warrant our forgiveness. We are meant to forgive. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. The sinner must be willing to forgive others if he or she hopes to obtain forgiveness. We need to be willing to forgive, to obtain forgiveness for ourselves. Brothers and sisters, are there people in our lives who have hurt us? Do we harbor what seems like fully justified feelings of resentment and anger? Are we letting pride keep us from forgiving and letting go? I invite all of us to completely forgive and let healing occur from within. And even if forgiveness doesn't come today, and sometimes it does take time, sometimes we have to work through and have that healing balm soothe and, and heal our hearts from the Savior. Know that as we desire it and work for it, it will come. It will come eventually, okay? And then he gave this example of Christ being on the cross, and he's being killed, and he, he's saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Christ is that ultimate example. And he says, I witness this peace, like this peace that comes into our lives as we heed the teachings of Jesus Christ and follow his example by forgiving others. As we forgive, I promise the Savior will strengthen us and his power and joy will flow into our lives. So I was contemplating like forgiveness in general. Like why do we hold on to these to the, these feelings of anger and resentment and um, un being unforgiving? Why do we do that going deeper? Do we truly trust the plan that Heavenly Father has for us and that every everything he's trying to teach us, if we're willing to be open to them, he will guide us on our healing journey and we have to be willing to put down our pride and rise up with healing from the Savior with those the healing balm that he has for us. And I said, I'm thinking about Joseph and his brothers, like how he stayed in that place of God. Like I am in the place of God as it was in that, the quote, like he stayed there through all those things that happened to him. And he was able to forgive. So one of the questions I asked was, how can I be more forgiving like Joseph? Like, what an amazing example. So we have all these examples to inspire us, but I want you to consider, who do you need to forgive? Who is it that you're struggling to forgive? And I really would like, I want to challenge you to really apply the healing balm of the atonement and forgive them and free yourself from that pain. In Doctrine and Covenants section 19, verses 16 through 19, it says, For behold, I, God, have suffered these things for all, that they might not suffer if they would repent. But if they would not repent, they must suffer even as I, which suffering caused myself, even God, the grace of all, to tremble because of pain and to bleed at every pore and to suffer both body and spirit, and would that I might not drink the bitter cup and shrink. See, we want repentance and in order to be forgiven and not go through that pain and anguish of soul. The Lord has also said that um, I will forgive whom I will forgive, but of you it is commanded to forgive all men. Now that is that part. This is the growth and the healing part that comes as part of the atonement of Jesus Christ. If I am allowed a sinner and allowed to be forgiven by God, I would hope that others would forgive me also of my really inconsiderate, unkind, unthoughtful moments in my life. Mm -hmm. But in the same token, I need to be able to be like Christ and offer that, be like Joseph in this moment and offer that back. Now, you notice that sometimes the hardest people to forgive are people who are your family. Because we notice and see all of the imperfections in their life. And sometimes we set up parents that they need to, we give them in, like expectations that aren't realistic, right? Like because my parents are older, therefore they need to be perfect. And that's not even true. Yeah. Or siblings or other people, let people grow and forgive. 
It is a very brave and courageous place to step into forgiveness, even when the other person has no remorse. They're not sorry at all, but you're the one that's suffering from that pain. It is seriously like the most courageous place to step into that and be like, want to make amends in a healthy way. We're not saying going into toxic relationships, but like just really giving it over to the savior. Now you'll notice how this went, guys. We go swimming really kind of like superficial. It's got kind of fun. Here we go. And then we start snorkeling. Wow, check this out. Look at all the cool things we see. And then all of a sudden we start talking about me here now. You notice how it gets deeper. Yes. And this is where lots of people will avoid the scriptures and they'll be like, Ugh! because they become a mirror of their own need for forgiveness and repentance, like and our own personal change. And so people will be like, I'm coming up. I'm gonna swim because it's more comfortable swimming. Just give yourself patience, take some oxygen. Take a, take a big deep breath and come underneath. You can do this. What does this have to do with you here and now? Are there people you need to forgive? Moments, situations, unkindness, uh, like, like Joseph. Get on your knees. Ask the Lord for help. Work yourself through that. And I know some of you right now are like, mm -mm, not me. And maybe, maybe <laughs> now is not the time. And I can't force you to do that. But I can tell you that when you do, it will be like pulling out a sliver that you... Have you ever noticed this? Like, if you look at, like, I've noticed this in my life where I'm like, I have a sliver. I have a sliver. Oh, that hurts. I have a sliver. And it could have been in there for a little while, like quite a bit. But once I noticed it, it became more. But when it comes out, they're like, the relief. Oh, man. So much relief and peace. You know, on the other side of the prodigal son was a brother who needed to experience forgiveness as well. Just saying. It's a very powerful story. So let's move to the next one, shall we? We're going to talk about divine purpose. Joseph had a divine purpose. There was a bigger picture here. And he figured it out. And his brother's like, we're so sorry. We sold you into Egypt. And he's like, hold on. Hold on. Let me teach you something. Can we go there? Genesis 45, 7 through 8. In Genesis chapter 45, 7 through 8, Joseph recognizes the situation and he says this. Do you want to read it? Yes, but actually it was five. I wanted to add that too. Okay. So jo Joseph, he's like talking to his brothers and he says, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by great by great deliverance so now it was not you that sent me hither but god and i think it's amazing when he, when he he just was able to see and i think heavenly father helped him right because he was trying to do what was right like heavenly father's helping him see that eternal like that bigger perspective it's like he's stepping like looking over things and he's like oh i see that there's so much to this than what i understood at that time and there is a purpose for everything that's happening in my life now there's a big difference in life to be like why is this happening to me to being like this why is this happening to me and can we cause ch more challenges in our life you guys can we talk about this for two seconds we, some, sometimes I hear people blame God and blame the devil. They'll be like, Heavenly Father is just giving me tests, so much adversity. And then they'll be like, the devil's tempting me. It's just too hard. And you know what? I'm not going to take away either of those points. But I think sometimes people give those two ends of the spectrum greater power. And they don't take personal agency into account. When And I've told you this before, but I had a, an old seminary student who I met who was going through a really rough patch. And, but he was doing things like he was doing things he ought not to be doing. And he was sharing them with me. You know, he was sharing them all. And he was very open about it. And then in the end, he walks away and says, well, God won't give me anything he can't handle. Right, Brother Scott? And I was like, whoa, time out, dude. I can't handle. Like uh, he said, God won't give me anything I can't handle. And I was like, whoa, you're right. That is a true principle. But you can give yourself more than you can handle. By your choices. We are very powerful, the choices that we make create a lot of what's going on in our life so here we got two people we got joseph who who recognizes and goes oh 
The Lord has a greater purpose. I was sold into Egypt. Okay, I'm here. Here am I, Lord, send me. And then we got the brothers who were like, we didn't mean it, we don't, we really messed up our lives. And, we're so... and the Lord says, hey, we still, you still got a chance. There's a divine purpose here. Mm -hmm. There's a divine purpose. So Joseph has this. And so sometimes look at the divine purpose of which you are supposed to do things. You know, two and a half years ago, um, when I started this YouTube channel, it was a strong prompting to be able to be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. And it was hard for me. Like, it was hard for me to do, honestly, to do it. People would be like, no, he just, no, I did not. I struggled with even teaching to a screen when I'd been in front of people. But there is a bigger purpose. I didn't know that COVID would happen. I didn't know the influence that we could have worldwide, but the Lord did. And I was reading my patriarchal blessing after, and it in it, in it, it talks about um, sharing the gospel throughout the world by methods of inventions of communication. And as a 15 year old, I had no idea what that meant, but there's perspective now. There's a divine purpose. And, and I just said, yes, I'll do it. Even though it's been hard mm -hmm. to be able to do. Do you believe that life is working for you or is it working against you? That's a really great question. Do you look at life that it's like, at you attacking you and it's doing things to you or do you believe that there is a divine purpose in your life and that it's working for you like the lord is working for you guiding you trying to teach you <laughs> lessons we are not here to be victims of our lives we came to earth with our agency and we are 100 percent responsible for our decisions right so if we can blame it on anyone else that's not really where we need to be going we need to be really accountable and also realize the purposes. And Heavenly Father also gives us grace. Think of that too. Like we're not, we're in a journey and we're learning and we like stumble again. We are learning. We stumble. He gives us grace. Like he knows that about us too. So be giving yourself that leeway, like some, some patience as well in your, in your journey. But it, everything is happening to bless you and to teach you and to help you get to where you really want to be going. I think some people say, Jesus, take the wheel, unless you start going down a path that you, and he does, and then you start going down a path, and you're like, just kidding, move over. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm taking that wheel back. There's a divine purpose. Joseph's teaching this. So let's go to 50, verses 20 and 21. In chapter 50, verse 20 and 21. I love his faith. So I'll read, do you want me to read it? Or is it, I can't remember. No, it's your turn. He says, now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Um, wait, did I do 20? I did 21. I'm supposed to do 20? 20 and 21. Okay, 20. But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as is this day, to save much people alive. Can you make that verse shine? Make it shine. Make it just glow. Because this is a principle of truth. And this is talking about divine purpose. Do you remember how when the prophets that we've studied in the past, Ab like Adam, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Ab like Isaac, Jacob, when they've all recognized that divine purpose, boom, off they go. God has shown them their divine purpose and he is willing to show each and every. This isn't a select group of like divine purpose, you know, clubs. Special it's like people. you're part of the divine purpose club. <laughs> Guess what? That means, that means there's a special place for heaven in heaven for you. And that's where people get confused. It doesn't matter what race, religion, color. Like God has created the children of men. Now, in Abraham 3, 22 and 23, remember he said, and there were many of the noble of great ones. And God saw these souls that they were good. And he said, we will go down. And like he'll prepare a place for us to recognize and see our divine purpose. So what does that look like for you? What does it look like? And are you living it? Or do you feel like a lot of opposition, a lot of resistance, and a lot of uh, this? I will live my divine purpose, Heavenly Father, but it, only in the way that I think is comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's it also takes courage to do this, guys. This is another one that takes courage. Do, do, do. Okay, last one. Promises. Promises, promises, She's promises. She's going to blow our minds. No, I don't know that I'm going to blow our minds, but here's what I want. Like, the Lord gives promises. So when we go to, to um, Genesis chapter 49, can you look in Genesis 49 verses 1 to 2? This is one that I pulled out 
and I looked at 49, 1 through 2. So I'll read this. This is just Jacob blessing all his children. So okay? before he dies, this he brings he them says. all in and gathers them in. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Okay, so he's preparing them. And then he blesses all his 12 sons. And it is really cool and powerful. And there's a lot to learn here. So you need to be reading this. Okay. So as you're looking at this, you're going to follow the same pattern. Remember, Jacob got a blessing from his father. Remember, Abraham gave a blessing to Isaac. Abraham also received blessings from Melchizedek. These blessings come through the virtue of the priesthood. And there are blessed, like when God promises blessings to faithful Israel, they will come true. They are promised blessings. So God gives everyone, so you can read in verse 49, you can look at all of them. You can look like Reuben, Dan, Asher, Judah. Like Judah has promised blessings and the Savior comes through his line. King David comes through his line. And the Lord knows this. Like the Lord knows this and he promises these. Like Judah like, and Levi, the promised blessings of like living and being part like priesthood holders and outward ordinances. They didn't have just good genes, y'all. Like they had promises that they could do. Now, go to section 50 or chapter 50 and we're going to look at 20 but this is Joseph Smith translation. So when Joseph Smith was oh, yes. translating the scriptures, okay, and he was translating, I'm going to use my space scriptures today. So if you go to the lesson for this week, if you scroll down a little bit, it goes to a part where you can click on the Joseph Smith translation. It's a lot easier. A seer shall the Lord my God rise up. It's just right there. Click on that and that will make it way easier for you to find and go back and forth. Or if you have caveman scriptures, you can find them too. <laughs> just saying. It's more fun. It's like the amazing race for scriptures. You can do that in your family. Now, the Lord promised blessings to Joseph. Specific blessings were promised to Joseph. And these are the promised blessings that he gave. All right. And here... Oh, I just lost it. Got to get it back. That's why I have my space scriptures. Okay. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I, oh, wait, let's Joseph, bit, uh, let's go to 26, 25. Okay. And it shall come to pass that they shall be scattered again and a branch shall be broken off and shall be carried into a far country. Nevertheless, they shall be remembered in the covenants of the Lord when the Messiah cometh for he shall made manifest unto them in the latter days in the spirit of power. And shall bring them out of darkness into light, out of hidden darkness, and out of captivity and freedom. The Lord, like one of the things that was aware was that Israel would be scattered. And Joseph, like Israel knew this, and he, in the promised blessings, he's saying to Joseph, Hey, there will be a righteous branch of Israel through you that will be scattered. In verse 26, he says, A seer, a prophet, you can circle the word seer and write prophet, shall the Lord God raise up who is a choice seer under the fruit of my loins, meaning he will be part of your posterity. Thus saith the Lord God of my fathers unto me, a choice seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and he shall be esteemed highly among the fruit of thy loins. And unto him will I give commandments that he shall do a work for the fruit of thy loins. Whenever it says fruit of the loins, it just means posterity, okay? direct lineage and posterity. And she, he shall bring them to the knowledge of the covenants which I have made with thy fathers, and he shall do whatsoever work I shall command him. Now, in Joseph, hearing this, this blessing that is, he's giving this by his father Jacob, Israel, giving this to Joseph, saying that out of thy posterity, the Lord will raise up a righteous, like, seer, a prophet, a seer in the latter days. And Joseph probably goes, wow, like that is, that is truly amazing. Now he understands that there's divine purpose. And then he gets and goes, well, what does this look like? Hmm, I wonder. And uh, he also prophesied, verse 31, that the fruit, of the, the fruit of Joseph shall write, and the fruit of Joseph, Judah shall write, and they shall be gathered together. So what happened was the Lord also prophesied that the that Judah would write and receive, we would receive his word, and the fruit of the loins of Joseph would write, and we would receive their word. Well, all this would be like really good. If you were sitting in Joseph's seats, it would be faith in looking forward. Now we can look backwards and connect the dots. Am I missing anything? That was awesome. Okay. So the Lord is connecting dots. There's promises. Mm -hmm. Now go to 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 3. Lehi is blessing his son, Joseph. 
And as he's blessing his son Joseph, he reminds him of the lineage that they have. I'll turn here. I like, I like flipping scriptures like slowly as I talk. Okay, so we're going to look in verse 3. It says, Wherefore thy... Two, honey. You're in chapter 2. You want it one more over. Flip the page. Where do you want me to be? You're in 3. Chapter so 3, verse 2. I might have written that down. And I did. I, I got it backwards. Okay, we're going 2 <laughs> Nephi, chapter 3, verse 2. Those of you who know me well enough know that that's not an unusual thing. And may the Lord consecrate... Am I right? So it was just the whole chapter. Oh! We're talking about the whole chapter. Okay. So this so, is the whole... Like he's, yeah, he's speaking to his son, but he's telling him all this stuff, and it's the same stuff, right? This is all in chapter 3. Now, let's go to verse 14. And thus prophesied Joseph, saying, Behold, that seer will the Lord bless, and they that seek to destroy him shall be confounded. For this promise which I have obtained of the Lord of the fruit of my loins shall be fulfilled. Behold, I am sure of the fulfilling of this promise. And his name shall be called after me, and it shall be called after the name of his father, and he shall be like unto me. For the thing which the Lord shall bring forth by his hand, by the power of the Lord, shall bring my people unto salvation." Brothers and sisters and friends, who is this Joseph that Joseph of Egypt prophesied would be raised up? It is Joseph Smith, a prophet of God in the latter days. Now you might think, what does that have to do with me? Everything. Because the prophet Joseph Smith has done more, save Jesus only for the salvation of men, than any other man that has lived in it. And because of that, the promised blessings that the Lord gave to Ephraim, Joseph's son, with that they would gather in scattered Israel from all over the world. See, um, in my patriarchal blessing, it says that I am of, and it might be the same for you, that I am of the tribe of Ephraim, who was Joseph's son. You know how happy I am to hear that? You know how grateful I am to know that, that the promised blessings for me mean that I get to do missionary work and gather in scattered Israel? Like, hear the words from Joseph of Egypt saying that a choice shear shall be raised up and it will bring my people unto salvation. This is, this is powerful stuff. This applies everything to us. So the Lord having Joseph go into Egypt and him saving his brethren had everything to do with me so that the Lord could raise up a righteous branch of Israel to gather in those. It's powerful. I would give, and I do give, like anything to do missionary work. I love it. Um, I love hearing messages from you about, hey, we went to the temple. I have a boy <laughs> that I'm coaching right now, and uh, he told me this week, as he's been working through some like, serious stuff, and he said, hey, I want you to know I'm, I'm getting my temple recommend. And uh, I'm putting in my mission papers. And I'm going to go on a mission. And I was like, what? Like, this is powerful stuff. Like, this is like part of those covenants. This is a gathering in of Israel. So, my friends, let yourself be gathered by these promises. Let yourself, let, let the truth be heard in your soul. That God has a divine purpose for you. Forgive yourself. Forgive others around you and let the Lord gather you in. Um, the Lord will bring you into Egypt to bring you into safety and nourish you for that short time so that you can go out and do more. And uh, I promise that that is there. And can you imagine Joseph Smith reading this and he's translating and then he goes translating and he goes, Wait, wait, wait a minute. Like, that's, that's me. That's, that's me, can't be me. Can't be me. And the Lord says, it's you. And he goes, but why me? And he sounds a lot like Noah, and he sounds a lot like Enoch, and he sounds a lot like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Lord says, well, because I have a divine purpose and promise that I need to do, and, and I need you to be a part of it. So as you are listening today, if you feel any inklings of, of just movement of the Spirit that says, I need to do this, or I feel like, like, what does this have to do with me here now, you here now? 
I don't know. It's going to be in your journal. All right. Do you have how a question I, for him? How have I seen God's divine purpose in my life? And how am I part of the promise of covenant Israel? So there are some questions to answer in your journal. You guys, we're sending you so much love. We're so grateful for you. And we're so grateful for this opportunity to teach so many people across the world. Like it expands our hearts like beyond anything I could possibly imagine. And the people that have reached out to us and um, with gratitude and just even struggling and any of those things. We pray for you. We love you. And thank you so much for joining us this week. Guys, today's word of the week is purpose. Not porpoise. That's like something that swims in the water. Purpose. Now, you might think, Steve, you spelled it porpoise. And I'm not gonna show I didn't, actually. I spelled it right this week. <laughs> um, write that in the comments section down below. Share with us where you're from, insights from today's lesson, and then we will read all of them. We read them all. Mm -hmm. We see them all. The good, the bad, and the ugly. We see them all. <laughs> and we love being able to do this with you as we study Come Follow Me. Okay, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Love you, bye.